morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, this is Dr. Dabowski here for a quick video on recording of bad debt expense, which is found in Chapter 5. Let's take a look at what's involved with recording bad debt expense. So let's look at a hypothetical timeline where we have two years. In year one, we're going to assume we make a sale on account. In that case, remember, remember there's whenever there's a sale on account, we're going to need cash's best friend because it's on account. So we need another receivable, accounts receivable, to hold the place for cash until it comes in. However, when we get to the end of the year, we're required under U.S. generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, to make an estimate of the future bad debts. Because it's not hypothetically possible to collect everything that we bill. So we have to make an estimate of what we don't expect to collect, or what we're going to call bad debt. So accounts receivable, as you know, is an asset because it possesses future economic benefit. In year one, the receivables that will be not collected in year two should not be recorded as an asset in year one. Otherwise, we'd be overstating our accounts receivable. So we have to state our accounts receivable of what we expect to collect in the future. Overstating assets or overstating our future benefits in year one is misleading to investors and people that read our balance sheet. So managers, therefore, are required to make estimate of the future bad debt at the end of year one before issuing its financial statements. The estimate reduces accounts receivable to amounts that they expect to collect, or what I said is net realizable value or what we say is NRV net realizable value so under accounting there's a few different methods two methods actually there's the allowance method which where we make the estimate of bad debt and there's also something called it's the direct write-off method which is not acceptable for gap however the allowance method works as follows at the end of year one an estimate a percentage estimate has to be made for the receivables that you don't expect to collect. The older the receivable, we assume the more less likely it is that you're going to collect the amount from the customer. So therefore, to make the estimate, the allowance for uncollectible accounts, which by the way is a contra asset account, this is the first time we use this term, and that means it has the opposite of a debit balance, it means it has a credit balance. And the way we estimate the allowance for uncollectible accounts is that it's equal to the total accounts receivable times the percent estimated to be uncollectible. That's how we determine the estimate. An example, not yet due, let's say 10,000. Okay, 2% of those would be expected not to be collected, then 200 would be the estimate. If we were to take those that are one to 45 days past due, we're going to assume now a larger percentage, 10%, is not going to be collected on that bucket, or 500. Finally, those that are even older, 46 to 90 days past due, will have to make even a higher estimate of 40% of 2,000 in that bucket, or 800. We then can add down, and we can see that our total estimate of what we don't expect to collect on these receivables is $1,500. So we would say basically that's the desired ending balance of our allowance for uncollectible accounts, which is our contra asset account. So 1500 would be estimated to be uncollectible. The total accounts receivable obviously is higher, but the amount that we don't e to expect to collect is what we say is our estimated uncollectible. So how would we go ahead and record the year one adjusting entry? Again, this is an adjusting entry. We're going to go ahead and simply hit bad debt expense for 1500 and credit the contra asset account. Notice it's got a negative in front of it because it's contra asset of 1500 And again, this is contra to the accounts receivable account. Bad debt expense, as we know, is an expense that's reported in the income statement. Not like expenses we've studied so far because it's an estimated amount. It's different than when we pay cash to buy inventory or buy cash, pay cash for a utility bill 
or pay cash to our employees for work or salaries. All of that is definitely not an estimate. That's a that's an expense that we can just see the cash going out and we can estimate it, we can call it an expense. This is an estimated an expense. So the allowance for uncollectible accounts, as we know, is a contra negative asset with a credit balance. It reduces the balance of accounts receivable. So therefore, accounts receivable less the allowance account is the net amount expected to be collected in the future. Hope you're getting this. It's quite interesting, huh? So in a balance sheet, if we were to so prepare a mini balance sheet, we would show the gross AR that we saw earlier of 17 less the 1500 of allowance account, it's the contra asset account, would state our AR on our balance sheet at a net realizable value of 15500 This is important because it tells us what we don't expect to collect against this 17 but on the balance sheet, the total assets will only reflect what we expect to collect. Note that accounts receivable is a current asset Current assets are assets that are expected to be liquidated into cash in 12 months or less. Anything that's expected to be converted into cash greater than 12 months would be considered a non-current asset. We call that classification of our assets as either current or non-current. The allowance equals the contra current asset or negative asset. The net realizable value is the net amount expected to be collected the allowance method prevents assets accounts receivable from being overstated by eliminating estimated uncollectible accounts. But remember, this is an estimate made by management. So beware, managers can manipulate estimates. So in year two, the actual bad debts were actually only 1400 Remember, our desired ending balance in that account was 1500 But it turns out that the actual bad debts were only 1400 So in this case, we'll go ahead and apply the 1400 against the contra asset account, the allowance. We'll debit it because we'll pull it out of that account. And we'll reduce our AR for the actual bad debts of 1400 Because now these are actually bad. We can write them off against the accounts receivable. Notice the effect of the entry on the accounting equation while there is no effect from bad news in year two because we've already reflected the bad news in year one. The bad news was recorded when we estimated the bad debts in year one. When we estimate the bad debts, the assets decrease and the expenses increase, which means therefore stockholders' equity decreases because expenses decrease retained earnings, and retained earnings is a component of stockholders' equity. So if retained earnings decreases, so does stockholders' equity. When the bad debt actually occurs, we don't record the bad news again, because we already recorded it in period one. And in essence, what we're doing is just cleaning up these two accounts to reflect the actual bad debts. Now let's look at a T account. What is the balance in the allowance account at the end of year two? First, in year one, we estimated the 1500 In year two, we applied the write-off of the account. So in effect, this $100 balance at, after the actual bad debts are applied, we've actually overestimated the bad debt in year one by $100. So the ending year two before adjustment is $100. Now let's go down further and say at the end of year two, the estimate for the bad debts in year three is going to be 1700 So therefore, we're going to have to bring this account up to 1700 the desired ending balance. In order to do that, we're going to need a plug. We're going to need to make another adjustment in year two to get it up to the desired ending balance of 1700 So that means we would need to debit bad debt expense for another $1,600. And then we would have to credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts to contra asset for sixteen hundred. So therefore, now we would have seventeen hundred dollars sitting in this account, which is how much we expect to write off or our actual bad debts to be in year three and after. So you see how this works: is we make the estimate in the current period for what we expect not to collect in the future. What if the actual bad debts had only been sixteen hundred? So again the estimated bad debts in year one 
was a $1,500 credit. The bad debts in year two were $1,600. Well, that means we would have taken out more than what we had estimated not to be collected. So then our ending balance before adjustment would be on the debit side. Notice the left side is always debit, right side is credit. We would have a $100 debit balance. In order to get to our $1,700 year-end desired ending balance in this account, since we have a debit balance, we would need to credit this account for how much? Well, in order to get it up to $1,700, we would need to credit it for the $1,700 plus the $100 debit balance because we underestimated the bad debt in year one. Notice in a prior example, we overestimated it by 100. When you underestimate it, you have to add the underestimated amount to the desired ending balance of 1700, which would give you an adjusting entry required of 1800. Your bad debt expense would be debited for 1800, and your allowance from collectibles would be credited for 1800. As you can see, this brings you up to the desired ending balance. Do you realize what you were doing? What do you think about that question? So when you estimate bad debts, assets and net income are reduced. That should be clear from the entries. However, no bad debt has actually occurred. Do you notice that connection? You are recording decrease to assets, fewer receivables in the current period. That won't be realized until a future period. And the bad debt might not ever happen at all. Welcome to the world of accounting. Once the bad debt actually occurs, there is no effect on assets or net income since the effect has already been recorded. Since you are estimating, the estimated uncollectibles will be wrong. Managers use this as a way to manipulate reported earnings. As I said earlier, we have to be careful. This is an area that can be manipulated by management. If you need a little extra net income, just estimate your future bad debts and current bad debt expense to be what? All right, you'd lower it. You'd make the estimate lower because an expense reduces net income. So if you make the expense lower, your net income will be higher. Your profits will be higher. Example, before adjustment, accounts receivable 200000 not yet due, plus 50000 past due. The allowance has a $2,000 credit balance. The estimated uncollectible is the six represents six percent of not yet due, two hundred thousand plus the twenty percent of the past due. So in that case, we would take six percent of two hundred thousand and twenty percent of fifty thousand or twenty two thousand. Notice that our allowance account, which keeps track of everything that we've previously estimated that we didn't expect to collect, has a credit balance of two thousand. But what's our desired ending balance? It's 22000 correct? So how much would we have to increase this allowance account to get it up to the desired ending balance of twenty two? Correct. I heard one of you shout out 20000 So we would debit bad debt expense for 20000 credit the allowance account for 20000 Let's assume, on the other hand, instead of a credit balance, our account had a debit balance. So that means we would have underestimated the bad debt in a prior period. Remember what I said when we overestimate it, then we have to add the debit balance to the desired ending balance in order to get the correct amount. So in this case, what are we going to do? Our bad debt expense is going to have to be, yes, increased by 24000 debit bad debt expense, because remember, we want to have a we have a two thousand dollar debit in there, and we want to get this account up to twenty two. So we'd have to credit the allowance account for twenty four thousand. A twenty four thousand dollar credit minus a two thousand dollar debit would leave a twenty two thousand dollar credit, which is this red number, which is our desired ending balance, and then that would be all that would be required. Let's look at a real company, Win Resorts. You ever hear of Win Resorts, the casinos? Look at their receivables year over year from 2012 to 2013. 162, 395 to 168, 734. Here's a proximate footnote that comes from Wind Resort's annual report. Tells you all about their accounts receivable. We tell you where their accounts receivable coming from. 
It also tells you that they made an estimated an allowance for doubtful accounts is maintained to reduce the company's receivables. And it says it's based on a specific review of customer accounts as well as management's experience with collection trends. You'll notice that they give you a further break out of the accounts receivables by casino, hotel, retail leases, and other, which is very transparent. And then you can see the allowance, the contra asset account here, the balance, this credit from year over year went from 64 credit to a 52 credit. Right, we can see that the accounts receivable is good. That's our gross, but this is the bad part of the accounts receivable. This is what we expect not to collect against this 221 in the future. So the net realizable value of WINS accounts receivable is 168,734, which agrees to exactly to their balance sheet amount reported in the current assets section. Allowance method versus the direct write-off method. So the direct write-off method, everyone, is not GAAP. So in this case, the allowance method, if we had services on account of 10 and an estimated bad debt of 2, we would debit bad debt expense, we would credit the allowance for 2. In year 2, if the actual bad debts that we needed to write off, we would debit allowance for 2,000 credit accounts receivable for 2,000 like we showed earlier. This does not affect anything because the bad debt is in year 1 is where we affect our income statement. The direct write-off method in year one, when we make an estimate of the bad debt, we do nothing. We only record it when we write the account off, which was in year two. We notice that that would not be proper accounting under U.S. GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. That's why the allowance method is preferred under GAAP. Under the direct write-off method, it's not GAAP preferred. In this case, we just write off the accounts receivable in the year that the actual bad debt occurs. This would not meet the matching principle. So the estimated bad debt gets recorded in year one, and the actual bad debts get reported <clears throat> only in year two. So you could see the difference in when the expense is recorded. Under the allowance method, it's recorded in year one, but it's recorded in year two under the direct write-off method. And then the write-off is gone ahead and credited, reduce the assets in year one for the allowance method, but we reduce the assets in year two under the direct write-off method. The allowance method is more accurate. Notice there is no difference for the two years combined, and that is the lesson of bad debt expense. This has been a longer video. However, this is a more difficult topic, so I wanted to give a more elaborate example of this particular topic. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day, afternoon, or evening.